What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Jared Gray with my co-host, Nino Brown, a.k.a. DDP, and your boy, Boomer. Uh, we've got a special guest tonight, my guy, my guy, Nigel Smith. How you doing, my guy? How you doing? I'm doing good. Glad to be here. Hey, we really appreciate you coming on. I understand you're busy. You got spring ball, cutting hair and everything. So <laughs> I get you. I understand what's going on. Um, real quick, favorite song. Let's start um, off with Power Trip, J. Cole and uh, Miguel. Nice, solid one. All right. Uh, favorite song pregame. Um, I'll just go with the classic "Dreams and Nightmares." I'll go with the classic one. Uh, ben, ben, Big I feel you. I feel you. Big Millie. All right. All right. Uh, so we're gonna go bounce back and forth. Me and Nino. Uh, I'll let Nino kick it off, and we'll go from there. All right. You, you grew up in Texas. Uh. Football is the way of life in Texas, right? Uh, talk to us about, you know, the Friday night lights, you know, and, and playing football on Friday and everything's shutting down and how it is out there. Everything's bigger in Texas, so. Uh, you know, I, I did grow up in Texas, and um, everything is bigger in Texas. But I, I was I was always kind of a football fan, but uh, I really, really liked basketball uh, more. Uh, I was a ball boy growing up uh, for a little long where I came from, and uh, I did, did it. I had started playing football by that time, started to enjoy it, and uh, just seeing those older kids like in high school, being around them when I was when I was younger, um, I always thought they, it was the coolest thing in the world. Just Friday night lights, all the fans, and uh, everything, and now being in it, I mean, it is it's it's something else for sure. Going to an, other states and like um, or people people coming to visit us and, and talking about how it is and uh, how much different it is, and I mean, it, it it's a lot. Like when you, you go to that like that that corner store, they they are they know who you are and they're all telling you, you know, good luck Friday, right? It, it's yes, crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Boomer. It's crazy away. how how big a small town can be, you know, you know, on, your your town is big, mm -hmm. you know, but your feet your football field is even bigger. So there's there's that. You guys you guys don't mess around, Melissa, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Um so you know, spring ball just finished, your, your spring ball your game was Saturday, right? Uh yes, sir. So how how was that? How did the game go? And what you've been working on the most? Uh, you know, it was fun. Uh, coaches, I only got two drives, and one of them was a one play drive. So got in about five six plays. Uh, then was just cheering them on the rest of the time. Did a little throwing competition. <laughs> I, I won it. Lost nice. it fifty. But uh, I I could have thrown a little farther to be honest. <laughs> just just I, I need to warm up a little more. Uh, get get my get my form down, but 50, 50 was good for me. And so uh, we might see a little OBJ pass from you hey, later in college, I'm always, right? I'm always down for it. Maybe even in high school, I'll break it out. Just hey, so. I'm I, hey, I'm gonna I'll need be, video for sure. I'll, I'll, hey, it'll be everywhere. Trust me. Be, <laughs> He's ready to go viral. He's ready. Oh yeah. yeah. But um, the things I've been working most on is we uh, had last year switched to. Um, a different front and uh, I'm playing uh, ahead of four now. And so I wanted to really master that four, that uh, head up four, just pass rush wise coming trans uh, transferring from a head up four, going down to the B rushing from a three and also uh, vice versa rushing from a five, just getting a lot better at that. Just playing the run, um, staying aggressive, whether I'm down King hands on tackle, reading the guard or I'm just playing down to the guard and ripping and running. I've been working a lot more on just being able to have strong hands and playing without thinking now that I have this defense down and uh, I feel that I've, I've really gotten, gotten the hang of it. My, my, my man's cerebral already. He was only a junior in high school. You can just hear it. And just the way he carries himself, uh, you are going to be one scary individual as things going forward. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. Um, being one of the top defense linemen of the year, right? How do you feel about that? With all the work that you've put into it and, and seeing it come to a culmination this year, being at the top of your craft, how did that feel? Uh, I really did feel good because, I mean, uh, growing up, you you see all these guys that, uh, I mean, I grew up with uh, around basketball and RJ Hampton was a guy that oh, yeah. at my school, uh, he, he was the dude. And uh, yeah. I mean, just had all the offers, the rankings, stuff like that. And I really never thought I would be in the position I'm in right now. I'm, I'm blessed to be where I'm at, and uh, it really, it really is just surreal. Uh, just, just having random people know me. Uh, one of my, one of my buddies' dad, 
uh, he, he was just down in Ohio, and I, I just heard this story from him uh, after a spring game. He was in Ohio for some firefighting stuff uh, at a deal with, like, 5,000 firefighters. Um, Ohio's far away. And uh, <laughs> he told me they, they went to a bar and were talking. They asked where he's from. He said, Melissa. And uh, they were like, Melissa? Uh, Nigel Smith goes there. Like, they, they started talking about me. And uh, it was it, – it really was – good to hear like it was it was awesome that that people down in ohio just some ohio state fans know who i am hear melissa and they they think of me and uh just just really good to be in uh, in that position awesome and that's that's crazy you know Ohio State's in your top top eight right so i mean there's that and you got an official visit there coming too right uh june 2nd coming up that's what's up coming up early Couple of weeks, <laughs> yes, sir. You know, hey, we cut it up the other day about haircutting. Obviously, I cut my own hair. I've been cutting my guy's hair, but <laughs> it seems to be your niche right now. And you know, everybody's coming to Nigel for haircuts. Uh, so tell me a little about it. Uh, you know, I got into it just uh, cutting my little brother. Uh, I uh, his his hair was rough, and so I <laughs> I, I, I buzzed him, and and um. I've, I've always watched haircutting videos and thought they were real interesting, like satisfying, just fading hair. And so I, I started getting into it about a year ago, really getting serious into it about four months, five months ago, just actually cutting hair on the regular. And uh, uh, so I've, I've gotten pretty solid at it for the, I mean, I've cut under 30 cuts, but I think I've gotten really good at it. And I mean, I've got the equipment now for Christmas and uh, now I'm able to charge and uh, people come to me. Uh, I'm starting to get more and more customers. So it's, it's more of like a hobby, but uh, it's just, it's just something I, I, I enjoy in my, in my free time. And uh, I've, I've gotten a lot better at. So we're going to, we're going to start a page called Nigel's big cat cuts. I, I might, I might need to. So I get some more, more clients. I love it. I love it. I got you. Oh man. Um. You know, we talked about visits and stuff like that. How's the the recruitment process been? And does it feel good now to finally dwindle it down to you know small list of schools? Uh, you know it does. It it really does. Uh, going going down to my top eight, it kind of just lifted a weight off my shoulders. Just hearing from some schools that I, I hated to say, but like I I really wasn't as interested in as these other schools and didn't feel as um just uh, confident in going there as, as I did in, in my top eight. And so it, it sucks to tell them that it, it, like we've, we've been building a relationship, but I want to go separate ways. And uh, it, it really, it, it really did help though. Just, just being able to, focus on spring ball, drop that top eight and my OVs and now get those people have questions, interviews out the way and just finish up the year strong. Right. You know, we, we talk about official visits and stuff and Rutgers is on your list uh, as well as Oklahoma, Penn State, Alabama, all these guys, right? And obviously, like, I, I'm going to ask the question, um, how much does Greg Ciano's presence put them on the list? Uh, Coach Ciano is – just one of one of my favorite head coaches in the nation to be honest he uh i i love his just his his mentality when it comes to football i love his uh just being around him makes me feel like i'm i'm getting better at something just listening to him talk he's very uh he's a, he's a big motivator and uh it's just funny how things came along with him i was i was still uh, going into my sophomore year early that summer right after my freshman year ended uh, weird how we met. I had some family down there and just ended up running into him. And he asked me to go to camp. I went, got the offer, and uh, we've built a very, very good relationship since. So I, th I think that they, they're well deserving of that top eight spot. I appreciate that. That's cool. Uh, well, I like the way he's talking about, you know, well, Rutgers isn't that far away from me. So, you know, I may be able to go see Nigel a little bit more than than, than you. Can now, so uh, <laughs> uh, I wanted to uh, to ask you. You know, you, you've seen a lot of guys. You're a top defensive player. You've seen a lot of offensive guys come across, whether it be on the line or or running back or quarterback that you've seen. Who's one of the top offensive players that you faced this year, and why? Ooh, um, all right. The top offensive player that I faced this year 
is uh it's a kid from Lovejoy and uh I mean he he was he was getting after it. They had three really good receivers. Uh Parker Livingstone um shoot. <laughs> Well, they had three really good receivers, and um, that though really it was all three of them that that uh, I, I really felt um, were the best we've played. I mean, our coaches were just not stressing, but they were making sure we stay locked in on, <laughs> on those guys throughout that week of practice. So I'll say it was just definitely those three uh, low joy receivers. Okay, cool, cool. Um. What's something about Nigel Smith, the person that people don't know that we haven't really talked about and really haven't hit on? Um, something about me that people don't know too much is usually I, I say this, I guess, but uh, something about me, I'm a big anime guy. I love anime. I've been watching it since I was a kid, so I'm big in anime. Gohan or Goku? Goku. <laughs> Gohan. I didn't like, didn't like the way it went, just, just with him growing up to be a scholar when he could have been this strong. The latest movie was, it was good, but you know, I, I'm, I feel I'm, you. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just, a, I'm just a, the one punch guy. That's, that's me. That, that's I'm, I'm, I'm a big one punch guy too. <laughs> I Thomas, I Thomas gets after it. So. Yeah. He, he got does. that little, that, that little crippled swag at home. And then all yeah. of a sudden he hits you with that one and you're done. <laughs> he gets after it. <laughs> uh, we, um, you know, you're a, the only there's only one Nigel Smith, right? There's there's no other one. But who's a guy, you know, maybe in the NFL or, or at the collegiate level that you might study, you know, to to take a few tips and, and better your craft from? Um, the the guys I really really love to watch their game is uh, one Miles Garrett. He's a uh, I'll say probably my favorite player in the league right now. I love his game, just how he how he goes at it. I I really think our personalities are a lot alike as well. Just he's a big anime guy. I uh, loves basketball on the side and just the things he does, but he he is able to bend around the corner so well. Uh, he's quick, fast twitch. I uh, just love love how he plays his hands, things like that. His pass rush, I, I just take a lot of that. Uh, then I uh, chase Young more so in college. He's been injured a lot uh, for a while in the NFL, so I I, I like to watch his his college film. Um, and then the Bosa brothers. You know, they, they really get after. I love how they play. Um, um, Joey has been tearing it up. <laughs> yeah. Nick has – I mean, shoot, that boy Nick is is uh, just – he's he's probably he, – uh, he's he's definitely top three DNs in the league right now. Right? I agree. So, yeah. uh, shoot, winning that, that defensive MVP, uh, I just love love their game. And uh, they, they're both a little different. But uh, just taking taking things from both of them, I, I uh, I'll, I'll sit down and watch a game and uh, just sit there and focus on them. That's what's up. All right, so it'd be absolutely criminal of me to not ask about my Sooners. Uh, what has drawn you to them? You know, I know you've been on visits with them. You got an OV scheduled for them soon. Um, what is it about Oklahoma that attracts you to them as a as a program? Um, you know, the the coaching staff definitely is one of the biggest things. Uh, the the fan base is is just unlike unlike uh, many others. Uh, they 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 uh, love to stay on Twitter and make sure they that you know they they want you there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I would say Coach Venables has put together a really really good coaching staff and just how how a lot of these guys mix and ooh, especially when it comes to like Coach Chavis and Bates just. Chavis, a younger, high energy guy. Still, he wears cleats to practice. Um, just, just things like that. And Coach Bates, a, a little bit older, but still young. More, more of a wise guy. Knows the right things to say. Always put together like little raps and poems and things. And I think they mix really, really well. Uh, they, they have a good history at Clemson of putting guys into the league. And even, even this last draft, they were, they, uh, the guys that they developed and recruited were, they had two first rounders, I think a second or third rounder. I mean, those guys, they, they have a history of developing. And I really think that I, I just fit in well with 
uh, not only their defensive scheme, but just the program itself and, and how it's held with that sole program Coach Venables has going and uh, just how they are there. They hold their guys accountable. Um, they had a top five recruiting class last year. It could be even better this year if all of you guys decide to come on. Hey, I'm just – I got to root my people on. So, I mean, that's what I got to do. So, I, I, you know that we are going to support you no matter where you go. Um, obviously, I know Penn State's really big. I love – dude, on an all-white game, I think it's got to be an OB for me. It's like I need to, <laughs> I need to go check out an all-white game for sure. Um, love to go to one. We have uh, one more question. We I, always I, do it. I got actually got one more off talk. I got to okay. ask him because uh, uh, we were speaking before you came on. Now you're six five, two sixty, and you're a junior in high school. As a junior in high school, uh, I'm I'm forty, right? As a junior in high school, I was like five foot flat, a hundred two pounds. All right, so you're like oh, almost damn near double me. You know what I mean? Um, what two and a half. Is, yeah. What is like your, your daily regimen to eat? Like how many calories a day are you eating? You know, because you're working out two, three times a day, whether it be with yeah. football or in the gym. Um, I know it's an odd question. I don't know if you count them, but where do you think your, ca your, your calorie count is just to maintain where you're at? Um, this summer, I'm I'm really taking my um, just how many calories I eat a day, just taking all of that in and uh, doing all the math and things. But uh, right now, every morning, so I'll wake up, go get my lift in, uh, especially now spring ball's over. I'll just get up, go do my lift. Uh, whatever my trainer sends me for that morning. And then I'll have my uh, about a scoop and a half to two scoops of protein. So, and it's about it's close to 30 grams of protein per scoop. So I'm probably taking about 45 in, uh, 40 grams for, for that one shake. It'll fill me up till about lunchtime. And for lunch, I'll have five eggs, uh, four pieces of turkey sausage, and then a fruit like a whole bunch of strawberries, something like that, uh, that I'll eat. Uh, I'll drink some um, BCAAs throughout the day just with my water, and then I'll get home. Well, after school, I go, like I just got back from uh, my trainer right now doing some speed and agility work, um, and I think right what I'm about to eat is some chicken. So I'll eat uh, about yeah. twice a day with – two or three protein shakes in the middle. I'm, I'm not really trying to gain weight. I'm, I just dropped down to in that 250 range. I'm about 258 right now. So I'm just trying to lean up for the summer and uh, put it back on to probably play about 258 throughout the season to 260. So just try and, try and stay around there. And that's, that's about what I eat in a day. Nice, nice. Well, when we talk about that, we always want to know what the breakfast cereal one of one is going to be. That's kind of our thing. Like, what's the one cereal you would eat? Last ball cereal. All right, all right. So, there's there's a lot of good cereals out there. You know, you got Fruit Loops, pretty good. Uh, your Lucky Charms, the marshmallows, always always a good go to. But uh, I mean, shoot, and you can't forget about the Cinnamon Toast Crunch. But I'm 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 gonna be honest with you. Uh, I'm I'm a Frosted Flakes type of guy. I'm, I'm a Frosted. <laughs> If if I'm if I'm uh, picking between those, I see Frosted Flakes in the back. I'll, I'll reach over, grab that box, pull it out, and get some Frosted Flakes. Maybe maybe a bowl and a half if I'm if I'm feeling it. That's what's up, uh, man. We we appreciate you coming, dude. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, we will be you know rooting for you. You got a fan here, and, and and both of us obviously you've been in contact with Boone for a while, and you, you know the situation, but. Yeah, you got a fan in me as well, man. I'm gonna be rooting for you the whole way. So, down in Boston. That's right, Massachusetts. Uh oh, all right. We, we're everywhere, man. That's what I said. He's he's right down the road. So when you OV comes, maybe he'll come bug you down at Rutgers and Penn State. So he ain't too far from you. So I'm down. Sweet. So let me know. Yes, and I, I'm I'm gonna come down to Melissa for a game or two. Uh, we'll we'll hook up, just chat up, and maybe uh check on your announcement time. Uh, when when have you decided when you're gonna that's, announce? That's what I was about to say. If you want to come down. Third game of the season for my senior night versus Royce City. I plan to commit there. Um, it's September eighth, I think. So if you want hey, to maybe a birthday there. party for me, let's go. I'm on September twenty fourth, so I'll, I'll be there. Let's awesome. call it there. Yes, sir. So we'll, we'll do a CFB Nation live commit night for my guy Nigel Smith here. And you'll get to see that nice little stadium we got going. About twelve thousand seats. You get one of them. Yes, sir. Y'all got an upgrade coming too, right? 
Oh, yes. Uh, that is an upgrade, the 12,000 seat stadium. Oh, it's still crazy, man. <laughs> It's bonkers. So, man, we appreciate you coming on. As always, uh, we'll obviously be talking, you know, throughout the season and throughout the summer. And, you know, we appreciate you as always. Yes, sir. Appreciate you having me. Thank you, Nigel. Thank you. Have a good night. Awesome.